Welcome to the second trimester of Engineering and Design. In this trimester, we're going to be using R2Block again to help us program the Arduino. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure everybody is running a particular version of R2Block, and I'll email this out. I've noticed that some of you are running this version, but let's go ahead and check, double check to make sure that you have this version installed. So the first thing to do is to uh, go down to My Documents. All right, so we'll open up a folder here and then uh, go into your documents and from your documents you have your Arduino folder and once you're in there you should see libraries and tools so you click on tools and you can see at the top of the screen um, the address that we've been following along here Arduino block tool tool and here's the version we're looking for right this is what it should say in there if you don't have this version, you can go ahead and delete your current version and copy the version that from the email into this folder. Don't worry about your programs. Your programs are stored in a separate space, so when you delete this, you will not uh, lose your programs. Go ahead and pause the recording while you accomplish that task. Okay, now that you've got that done, let's go ahead and look at the basic requirements of every Arduino program. Everything, every program that you make for the Arduino has to have these two functions, setup and loop. And the Arduino has to have exactly one copy of each. So you notice here that on the control panel, we've got both these options here. You can only have one, and you must have one. You cannot have any more. When you uh, go ahead and um, when you go ahead and up, let's do a simple program here, and we could set digital pin uh, four to high. You'll notice here that when we try to upload it to Arduino, it's not going to work because it says there's multiple loop blocks because you can only have one loop block and one setup. So we go ahead and get rid of this, and we upload it to the Arduino. Arduino will turn this graphical code here into real text code. And you'll notice here in this, you will see that there's one copy of setup and one copy of loop. That is a basic requirement for all Arduino programs. There's no exception to that. So when we go ahead and uh, do a program with just this loop, right here, and we upload this to the Arduino, you'll notice that even on this one here, again, it looks the same. You have a setup and loop. The Arduino block has automatically created this. And just to prove that this is different than the last one, we'll change this to digital pin 5, and we can upload it to the Arduino. And you see now that it's, it's 5, and it's got the setup and loop here again. So it automatically does one copy of each. It has to have exactly one. Will not work with any more or any less. Now let's look at the setup versus the loop and see what's going on differently in each one. When we look at Arduino block, let's go ahead and pull out this one here. This one allows us a little bit more advanced control of our Arduino. When you put anything in the setup here, it runs once at the beginning. When you put anything here in the loop, um, that control structure will keep repeating whatever is in there again and again and again and again. So um, if we wanted to just do some serial communication, uh, we'll just put a, t a message in there. And we'll say, uh, this is the setup. And then we'll uh, we'll do another one down here. We'll say, all right, this is the loop. Now, just to give ourselves a little bit of time to open the serial monitor, we're going to put a delay in here. And you'll notice on this version of Arduino block, the delay is in the control, the yellow control. So we'll put a delay first thing here, we'll, we'll put a delay for about uh, 8 seconds, right? 8,000 milliseconds. And then um, in between each one here, we'll put a delay of 
um, one second. And so we'll go ahead and upload this to Arduino. And I want you to uh, make a note on your paper of what happens with this program and explain why that is. When you first load it, remember that you might have a little bit of a delay because we programmed it intentionally to have a delay. So don't be surprised if you have to wait eight seconds or so for something to happen. Also be sure that you open the serial monitor because that, by pressing this button right here, that's where your text is going to show up. Now the situation could arise where you want your Arduino program to stop, but you'll notice that the way it's constructed, unless you do something special, it will never stop. It's designed to keep looping and looping and looping. And that's where we're going to take advantage of what's usually considered a programming mistake um, called an infinite loop. So what we can do in order to make an infinite loop is we can go ahead and uh, do something like this. Do something, use a what's called a while command. And we can um, go ahead and we'll need a test. What we end up with is we'll get our while commit back here. And we're going to do a test. We're going to say while 1 is equal to 1. That's always going to be true. And while 1 is equal to 1, we're going to have a delay of 1,000 milliseconds. So I want you to go ahead and upload that to your Arduino. And open the serial monitor by pressing this button right here. If the serial monitor doesn't pop up, you might notice it's available down here under the Arduino icon. So go ahead and run that and let me know what happens. Flow charting is essential in programming. It helps us to visualize what's going on with the computer, what decisions it's making, and how the program flows from one command to the next. These are the basic symbols involved in flow charting. What we're going to do now is we're going to create some simple flow charts for the previous two programs that we've done. So if these are symbols, let's look at how we would put a flow chart together. First thing we can start with the setup. We've got the rounded corners. Rounded corners uh, start or an endpoint here. So we could call this setup or we could call this um, start. And then we have an arrow. Symboli symbolizing that that's the flow, the direction that it's going to take. And this is our program setup first loop. So next we're going to print this is setup. This part is in the setup of the program. And then we're going to go ahead to the next step. And in the next step, we have uh, this is a loop. And then uh, finally, in the last step, we have uh, wait 1,000 milliseconds. And you notice here, in this one, the flowchart goes back up and circles back upon itself. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the other uh, program that we did, and that was our fake terminating of the program. So here's a flowchart for you to recreate of the stopping function that we created on our Arduino. So you notice it starts out pretty similar, but then we have a decision here. And decision seems kind of silly. Is 1 equal to 1? Well, of course it is, and that is always going to be true. So it's going to follow this decision path and go into this while loop. And so once it goes into this while loop, it does a delay. And then it circles back up and de evaluates the test again. So then it circles back up, evaluates our test again. Is 1 equal to 1? Well, of course it still is. So it gets stuck in this infinite loop down here, which effectively terminates or ends our program. The only way we can get out of it is to reset our Arduino or download a new program. Next, we're going to look at how we can pause a program. And in order to do that, we're going to look at a, a typical counting program where you press the button once and the um, and it increments or, or puts
puts a higher number onto the screen. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to control and we're going to use um, one of these if commands. Now these commands, unlike the while, are, are just linear. It will only evaluate the test once. The while command will keep evaluating the test over and over and over again until the test isn't true. The if command, if the test is true, the then is done just one time. So let's go ahead and look at what we can evaluate. And so let's do a test if um, digital pin, and we're going to have to use these, the orange one with the curved brackets. And we'll do digital pin. And on your pre-built board, digital pin is in, uh, we have a button in digital pin 12. So if digital pin 12 equals high, then we want to um, count up a number, right? So we'll declare a variable in our setup. The variable will be counter. Right? When we declare a variable, we'll go over this a little bit more later, but basically we're telling the program to set a spot aside a space in its memory for this number. Right? Um, the program needs to know what it's going to have to do and what it's going to have to store as it goes along. So we want it to remember an integer that we're going to call counter. And then um, if the digital pin high, 12 is high, we want a counter. Let's add one to counter. So we're going to start off uh, with just counter. And we'll clone it. And counter is going to equal whatever counter was beforehand, plus one. Right, so this will take counter, and it will change counter to the value of whatever counter was, add one. It'll just add one to whatever counter was. Okay, now we want to go ahead and uh, print line. So after this loop, we'll do communication, uh, serial print line, Right, keep it outside of the loop just to show that we're going out of the loop. And we'll say this text will appear on the screen. It'll be counter. We're going to need the glue here for the integer with the pointy edge. And we'll clone counter and put it right in there. And let's go ahead and upload this to our Arduino and see what happens. Um, go be sure to open the serial monitor and press the um, button that's in button 12. It should be the one that is close to the green LED on your board. So here we've got counter scrolling rapidly and you notice when I push the button, I've just pressed it once, I press it pretty quickly, it counted up to five. Uh, there we go, we counted up, I pressed it, tried to press it as fast as I could and went to eight. So now this isn't very useful for a um, for a counter because um, we, if it's going to count numbers, we want it to only go up by one each time. So, and our solution is going to be to use a while block. The while block should be programmed like this. It has the exact same test as the if block, and you could even clone this from here and copy it down here. And we just put a delay, 10 millisecond delay. And we kept the same counter. So go ahead and upload this to your Arduino, open the serial monitor, and press the button to see the difference. Now you should notice that again you get counter scrolling pretty quickly down the screen, uh, but this time when you press the button, right, if I press and hold it down, it stops. And it doesn't actually uh, change the number over and over again. So here we've, we've effectively paused the program while this button is being pressed. So what this does is it gives us a useful method of actually counting how many times the button is being pressed uh, without counting really, really, really high if the button is just pressed and held down. Now the next thing to do is to construct a flowchart of this um, program. And in this flowchart, you'll have two diamonds because there are two decisions. All right, you'll have a diamond here with two paths leading out of it. All right, this test is, is true or false or yes or no. 
and you'll have a diamond here with two paths leading out of it. Right? You should notice here that with this diamond or decision, both of the paths leading out of it allow the program to progress and move forward. Right? If this is true, right, it goes to this and then it keeps going on to this. If this is false, right, it just skips this part and goes directly to this diamond right here. With this diamond, um, the two options will either allow it to bypass and go right down here to print line and, and show our counter on the screen, or it will go into this loop and it will delay. And after the delay, it will reevaluate this pin. And if it's still high, it will go back into the delay. So you have a little loop here that actually goes back to an earlier part of the program. All right, so go ahead and see if you can get a flowchart. Uh, let me see it when you're done. And um, if you've given it a shot for a while and you still need help, um, make sure you give it an honest try. But if you still need help, let me know and I will walk you through it.